page 224, chapter 2, Broken Images. Girish Kannad, born 1938, died 2019. Girish Karnad is a contemporary writer, playwright, actor and movie director. He is a recipient of the Padma Shri 1974, Padma Bhushan 1992 and the Gyanpeet Award 1998. He writes in both Kannada and English. His plays generally use history and mythology to focus on contemporary issues. He is also active in the world of Indian cinema. This play, too, can be looked at from multiple levels. The focus on values, both personal and academic, and the issue of bilingualism in today's world. For you know only a heap of broken images where the sun beats and the dead tree gives no shelter. T.S. Eliot, The Wasteland. The interior of a television studio. A big plasma screen hangs on one side. Big enough for a close-up on it to be seen clearly by the audience. On the other side of the stage, a chair and a typically telly table, strong, wide, semicircular. At the back of the stage are several television sets with screens of varying sizes. A small red bulb glows above the table, high enough not to appear on the television screen. Manjula Nayak walks in. She is in her mid-thirties or forties and has a confident stride. She is wearing a lapel mic. It is immediately evident that she is at home in broadcasting studios. She looks around. Page 222 Nice. Hmm, very nice. Neat. She goes and sits on the chair, adjusts the earpiece. But where is the camera? Listens to the reply. Ah, I see. New technology. Isn't it scary? The rate of obsolescence. Listens. Of course I have. In London and in Toronto. But when you think of Indian television studios, you always imagine them cluttered, lots of men and women scurrying about, shouting orders, elephantine lights, headphones, cameras, you know what I mean. But here, I mean, it's all so spartan. I know, but a bit lonely too, like a sound studio. All right, all right, no camera. I just look ahead and speak to an invisible audience in front of me. Direct. Fine. Fine. I can hear you. Clearly. Voice test. Testing. Testing. One, two, three, four, five. Hello. Hello. Shall I tap on the mic? <laughs> My speech will last exactly ten minutes. I have timed it. No, I won't read. Look ahead and speak. Good, but that may take a little longer. A couple of minutes if I don't fumble too much. <laughs> uh, the yellow light? Okay, okay, ready, fine. She mouths, ten to zero silently, emphasizing each count with her forefinger. At the stroke of ten, the light turns yellow. The announcer appears on the big plasma screen. The other screens remain blank till the last few minutes of the play. Good evening. This is a proud evening for the Shri TV channel. For tonight, we bring to you Ms. Manjula Nayak. Many of you will know her as a renowned Kannad short story writer. Until a year ago, she was a lecturer in English in Bangalore. But she had been writing in Kannad. Not unusual, as you know. It's amazing how many of our Kannar writers are lecturers in English. From the earliest days, B.M. Shri, Gokak, Adiga. Page 226 Even modern ones, Lankesh, Shantinath 
Anantha Murthy and of course there is A K Ramanujan who was equally at home in both languages but last year Mrs Nayak stunned the world yes i mean the world by writing a novel her first novel in english the river has no memories the advance she received from her british publishers made headlines here and in the west and then the novel turned out to be a best seller all over the world our heartiest congratulations to mrs nayak this evening we broadcast a kannada telefilm based on this remarkable novel the film will begin in exactly 10 minutes and we have with us in the studio miss nayak herself who has graciously agreed to address our viewers about her work ladies and gentlemen welcome the literary phenomenon of the decade mrs manjula nayak applause on the soundtrack the light turns green the announcer disappears and manjula's image appears in her place she speaks namaskara i am manjula nayak i must mention that officially i am mrs manjula murthy but my creative self continues to be manjula nayak there are some areas in which we must not let marriage intrude too much <laughs> Talking about one's work is a very difficult task. So let me find an easy way out. Let me just take up two questions I constantly come across. They seem to bother everyone here abroad. I'll answer them to the best of my ability within the short time at my disposal and shut up. Actually, that's what a writer should do, shouldn't she? right and shut up <laughs> the first question you have probably guessed it already after having written in kannad all your life why did you choose suddenly to write in english do you see yourself as a kannad writer or an english writer what audience do you write for and variations on that theme page 227 Actually let me confess if i had foreseen how many people i would upset by writing in english i really would not have committed that folly intellectuals whom i respected writers who were gurus to me friends who i thought would pat me on my back and share my delight they are all suddenly breathing fire How dare I write in English and betray Kannada? <laughs> betray. The answer is simple. If there was betrayal, it was not a matter of conscious choice. I wrote the novel in English because it burst out in English. It surprised even me. I couldn't understand why it was all coming out in English, but it did. That's all. There is no other explanation. What baffles me actually, let me confess, hurts me is why our intellectuals can't grasp this simple fact. I have been accused of writing for foreign readers, accused as though I had committed a crime. A writer seeks audiences where she or he can find them. my british publishers said to me we like your book because it's so indian we receive any number of manuscripts from india but they are all written with the western reader in view your novel has the genuine indian feel <laughs> but who listens here a pandit for instance has stated that no indian writer can express herself hmm, himself honestly in english for indian writers english is a medium of dishonesty hmm of course one could also ask how many kannad writers are honest in what they write in kannad but if you did that you would be immediately condemned as a traitor hmm. you can't win recently the president of the central sahitya academy 
the National Academy of the Letters, who shall remain nameless, declared that Indians who write in English do so in order to make money, that by writing in English they confess their complicity in the global consumer market economy. He of course spoke in English. Hmm. Page 228. Speaking in English, as you know, gives you the authority to make oracular pronouncements on Indian literatures and languages. But my response to the charge that I write in English for money would be, why not? Isn't that a good enough reason? Would you like to see what royalties I earned when I wrote in Kannad? Pause. Yet, the accusation hides or perhaps reveals a grim anxiety. As is clear from the dictum of the President of the Academy, what is at issue is not creativity but money. What hits everyone in the eye is the money a writer in English can earn. The advance I received for my novel, the advance only, mind you, helped me resign my job and concentrate on writing. Of course, it is a cause for jealousy. Having struggled in Kannad, I can understand that. A Kannad proverb says, A response is good, but a meaningful response is better. Meaningful. Artha Purna. The Kannad word for meaning is Artha, which also means money and of course fame, publicity, glamour, power. <laughs> Let me leave it at that. The second question everyone asks is about the book itself. Thank God! How could you? You seem so strong and active. I was a long jump athlete in college, though of course no Anju Bobby George. How could you so vividly recreate the inner life of a person confined to bed all her life? How can a healthy, outdoor woman be so empathetic? to the emotional world of a disabled person. Mm, well, it is sad, but I owe that to my younger sister, Malini. She was physically challenged, suffered from what is technically called meningomyelocele. The upper part of her body was perfectly normal. Below the waist, the nervous system was damaged, completely dysfunctional. A series of operations which started soon after her birth reduced her existence to misery. She spent her entire life confined to the wheelchair. Six years ago, my parents died. She came to stay with us in our house in Jayanagar and I nursed her. Page 2 to 9. During the last few months, it was quite clear that she didn't have much time left. I am childless and she became my child Truly, the book is about her. I have dedicated it to her memory. She died last year, just a few months before the book came out. I have tried to relive what I learnt about her emotional life as I nursed her, tended to her, watched helplessly as she floated into death. I miss her. I miss my beautiful, gentle sister. Her eyes moisten. She is the only character in the novel drawn from life. The other characters and the plot are entirely fictional, invented. Pause. I must here acknowledge the support I received from one person while I wrote the novel, my husband, Pramod Murthy. I was working full time as a lecturer then college chores and home was full of her memories and there was I suddenly writing in English, floundering, sinking. I was utterly clueless. There were moments when I broke down, when I felt I couldn't go on. But he was always there at my side, encouraging me, prodding me on. Without him, I would never have completed the novel. Thank you, Pramod. The overhead light turns yellow. Well, that's it. I have committed the cardinal sin of writing in English. <laughs> there is no prayashchita for it. No absolution. But fortunately, 
the film you are about to see is in Kannad. That makes me very happy. After all, the family I have written about is Kannad. I am a Kannad writer myself, born to the language and civilization and proud of it. The Kannad reality I conceived in English has been translated back into Kannad to perfection by the director. I couldn't have done it better. My thanks to the cast and the crew and of course, Shri TV. Well, enjoy the telefilm. Good night. Namaskara. Page 230. The light turns red. She leans back in her chair. Pause. Then into the lapel mic. I hope that was okay. I didn't fumble too much, did I? Listens. Thank you, Reza. The pleasure's all mine. See you outside. The red light switches off. She smiles contentedly. Phew! <sighs> That'll get them. Good. I have taken enough shit from them. <laughs> Laughs and gets up. Manjula's image on the screen should have given way to the film, but hasn't. Instead, the image continues as before, watching her calmly. She is, of course, unaware of it. She makes a move to the door. Image. Where are you going? Startled, Manjula stops and looks around, touches her earpiece to check if the sound came from there and moves on. You can't go yet, Manjula. Manjula looks around baffled and sees that her image continues on the screen. She does a double take. From now on, Throughout the play, Manjula and her image react to each other exactly as though they were both live characters. Manjula, oh God, am I still on? Confused, she rushes back to the chair and stops. You are not. The camera is off. Is it? Then how? You are standing up. If the camera were on, I would be standing up too. I'm not. Is this some kind of a trick? Into her lapel mic. Uh, hello? Hello? Can you hear me? How come I'm still on the screen? Reza? Hello? Taps her mic. No response. Is there a technical hitch? No hitch. To the image. But uh, how? Who are you? How? Has the tape got stuck? Page 231 Photographs from the play Broken Images Staged by National School of Drama in 2005 Page 232 Calls out into the mic Raza! Raza! Help! Help! What are you screaming for? What are you afraid of? It's only me. Who are you? Me? You? To herself, this is absurd. Quite. A long pause while Manjula refuses to acknowledge the presence of the image. Then she slowly looks up. The image smiles. A good speech, I must say. My compliments. An excellent performance. The viewers loved it. All two million of them. But the film? Hasn't it started? Aw, screw the film. It's awful anyway. I told them it won't work. A telefilm needs lots of movement, different locations, pace, action, drama. A good novel does not necessarily make a good film. I argued, but they were persistent. Sponsors were easy to find. Pause. Hmm, they paid well. Your performance now. This introduction. It will be the best thing this evening. You'll be all over the papers. You have managed to upset a lot of people. Thanks. I meant to. Pause. If one had to comment. In the extreme case that one had to. That bit about your sister Malini. The tears... That could have been played down. 
I wasn't pretending. I loved her. Pause. I love her. Still, I don't think I have ever been as close to anyone else. It was a close bond. The novel doesn't really do her justice. She was attractive, more attractive than me, intelligent, more intelligent than me, and vivacious. Which I never was. I accepted that she radiated life from the wheelchair to which she was confined. I have always been reconciled to being the second best. Page 233 her illness was unfortunate, but because of it, she got the best of everything. Defensive She never asked for anything. Soon after her birth, the moment the gravity of her situation was realised, my parents moved to Bangalore, took a house in the Kuramangala extension. She became the... Uh, the... searches for a phrase and then settles for the apple of their eye. When she was old enough to go to school, a teacher came home to teach her English and mathematics, everything else. She read up for herself. History, philosophy, anatomy. She was hungry, hungry for life. Gobbled it all up. And you? I have often wondered whether I would have been as bright if I'd received all that love and attention. No. You wouldn't. Let's face it. Defensively. I did write a bestseller. That's true. But you are right. I wouldn't. They left me with grandparents in Dharwar. An affectionate couple. They fussed over me, but no substitute for parents. When vacations approached, I could barely wait to get to Bangalore. And once I finished college... I found a job in Bangalore and came and lived with them. Those were the happiest days of my life. Halcyon! But then I met Pramod. We got married and settled down in Jayanagar. Father helped with the house, but he left most of his money in her name, for her care. She was always the focus, naturally. But when your parents died... Why didn't you move into the Kuramangala house? Such a nice big house, the garden, the sense of space. The Jayanagar house was my house. I was used to it. My college was in Jayanagar. We had selected a house which was within walking distance. Kuramangala would have meant a long haul every morning. And then, such a huge house, not easy to look after. I would have had to stay home all day like mother. Give up my job, probably. No, as I said, she was one of the most sensitive people I have known. Page 234 She realised moving to Koramangala would turn my life upside down. She insisted that we sell the Koramangala house. Well, I was reluctant, but she wouldn't listen. She wanted no sacrifices on her account, no compromises, and she adjusted beautifully to the smaller house. Pause. Actually, I couldn't take Koramangala. non Kannadigas, most of them. And of course, all those empty houses bought as investments by non-resident Indians. I fancied myself a Kannad writer in those days, wanted to breathe the language, live in the heart of Kannad culture. Now that you are a success in English, have you bought a big bungalow in Kuramangala? Oh, shut up! Was Malini at home with Kannad? Of course, it is our mother tongue, but she rarely used it. Her Kannad was limited to the cook and the maid. So, Kannad was the one area that became yours? You could say that. I tried to occupy it and make it mine. <laughs> Actually, I have never said it publicly. But if you argue that a novel written in English cannot express truth about India, 
because we do not express ourselves in English. <laughs> oh, God, what a sentence! But if you believe that, then let me say that I could not have written about my sister in Kannad. She breathed, laughed, dreamt in English. Her friends spoke only English. Having her in my house for six years helped improve my English. Pause. So when are you going to write your next novel? Will it also be in English? I think I have already answered that question. Why need I write another novel? Surely one is more than enough. Page 235 Critically and Financially but then what are you going to do? You have resigned your job. You are rich. Hmm, well to do. Well to do. You have no sister to look after. An empty house. Nothing you can use. Are you trying to make me feel guilty? Are you implying I used her? It was my life as well, you know. I am in the back too. Though I would never admit to it publicly. Most readers find the girl's first cousin quite unattractive. Eek! That odious character, is that you? Well, there you are. A triumph of objective self-analysis, shall we say? Hmm, if you must. But I am not that wicked, really. It was a narrative necessary to have a negative character, a matter of technique, the sympathetic heroine, a villain as a counterpoint, you see. But Pramod must be pleased by your treatment of his character. He comes across as not very good looking or striking, but not bad looking either, good enough for me. But an intelligent Warm and lovable person, fun-loving, fond of practical jokes, noble and simple, almost simple-minded. You can say that again. You know, we met soon after I moved to Bangalore. He felt attracted to me, didn't know how to convey it. So do you know what he did? I had a friend called Lucy, a close friend. He wrote a letter to her about me and wrote me a letter about Lucy. Then he mailed her letter in an envelope addressed to me and vice versa. So I received this letter addressed to Lucy, moaning and groaning about how I tortured him. And I didn't even know he was interested in me. And of course, Lucy received the other letter. He thought he was being absolutely clever. Hmm, original. We went and confronted him. Lucy tore her letter to shreds and flung the pieces on him and stormed off. Melodramatically, I felt sorry for him and said, Idiot, every 15-year-old tries that trick. Convinced it's never been done before. Page 236 he blushed to the roots of his hair. But you got married, so the ruse worked. Mm, no ruse. He had made such a fool of himself. He did the only thing he could to save his self-respect. He married me. Mm, I didn't mind. Mind? You would never have got another man of his calibre. Hmm... I suppose so. And what happened to Lucy? She stopped talking to me. <laughs> Women found him attractive. Malini too? Of course, she was a woman after all. They were close to each other. Very. And you didn't mind? Mind? Thank God for it. You see, he is in software development works from home. She was confined to her chair. Can you imagine what would have happened if they hadn't got on? 
he must be proud of you, that flattering portrayal of him in the novel, the moving acknowledgement in your speech today. I doubt if he will even hear of my speech, ever. He is in the U.S. Oh, when did he go? Last year. He lives in Los Angeles now. He is in demand as a software wizard. Last year? So has he even read the novel? The launching of the novel was a major media event in the U.S., after all, you must remember it had already proved a super hit in Britain. They invited me to New York for the release. There was much fanfare. He sent me an email of congratulations from Los Angeles, apologised that he couldn't get leave to attend. And you didn't go to L.A.? Page 237 He didn't even hint at it. I'm sorry, but the chronology is beginning to confuse me. When did he decide to go to the States? Was it after Marlene's death? Yes. Immediately after? No, but soon after. How long after? Explodes. Who are you? For God's sake, what gives you the right to interrogate me like this about my private life? Either you are me, in which case you know everything, or you are an electronic image, externally prying, in which case you can just, just switch off. The image smiles. Suddenly, Manjula becomes calm, thinking about the play. 1. How genuine is the love that Manjula expresses for her sister? 2. The sister does not appear in the play, but is central to it. What picture of her is built in your mind from references in the play? 3. When the image says, her illness was unfortunate, but because of it, she got the best of everything. 1. What is the nature of Manjula's reply? 2. How can it be related to what follows in the play? 4. What are the issues that the playwright satirizes through this TV monologue of a celebrity? Talking about the play. 1. Broken Images takes up a debate that has grown steadily since 1947. The politics of language in Indian literary culture, specifically in relation to modern Indian languages and English. Discuss. 2. The play deals with a Kannada woman writer who unexpectedly produces an international bestseller in English. 1. Can a writer be a truly bilingual practitioner? 2. Does writing in an other tongue does writing in an other tongue amount to betrayal of the mother tongue? Page 238. Appreciation. 1. Why do you think the playwright has used the technique of the image in the play? 2. The play is called a monologue. Why is it made to turn dialogic? 3. What is the posture the celebrity adopts when the camera is on and when it is off? Suggested reading. 2 monologues, flowers, broken images by Girish Karnad. The Dreams of Tipu Sultan by Girish Karnad. Kaleidoscope. You were just listening to this audiobook. Recording by Bati Lang Lingdo and Shanu Muxim. Assisted by Minakshi Kugreti. This audiobook was produced by Ajit Horo and presented by CIET NCERT, New Delhi, India.